Hi, welcome to module 1 of the Azure Data Factory Hands-On Lab. This module is about setting up the resources we need to complete the other modules of this lab. In this lab module, we will be using Azure PowerShell to run a deployment script that will create our servers and resources, as well as upload a few files to various locations in our resource group. We will also need to configure an Office 365 API connection for use in sending out email notifications. And finally, we will show you how to create the Azure Data Factory using the Azure Portal Blade. We could have included the Azure Data Factory creation in the PowerShell script, but it's good practice to see the configuration blade. First, let's make sure you have everything you need to get started. We recommend Azure Chrome as a browser to access the Azure Portal. You will need the lab download into a local folder on your computer. The URL aka.ms forward slash adflab2 should take you to the GitHub account where these files are hosted. The most important piece for this lab module will be the deployment folder, but the other folders contain the lab module walkthroughs, as well as additional helper files and scripts for use during the lab. You'll need to have Azure PowerShell to run the PowerShell script and to access the needed Azure services from your local computer. Finally, you need to make sure you have an active Azure subscription with rights to use and create Azure services. We will be making use of a wide variety of Azure technologies in this lab, including resource groups, Azure SQL databases, an Azure SQL data warehouse, HT Insight clusters, Azure Blob Storage, Azure Logic Apps, and of course, Azure Data Factory. Before you run the deployment script in this lab, you should check out the script in the PowerShell integrated scripting environment. At the top of the script is an important configuration section where you can configure some defaults that affect how your resources are deployed. Let's review these settings. The dir variable should be set to the location that you're running the script for. This is to make sure that the script can access other files it needs. The resource group name will be the name of the Azure resource group that all the resources for this lab will be deployed to. The location is the geolocation of the resource group that will be used when creating the services. The lab name prefix will be used at the beginning of all our resource names and is used as part of a couple of variables in the Azure resource management template. We'll get into how our names are built shortly. The logic app email is going to be used to set the default email we want in our Office 365 API connection. Note that this is optional in the lab, but highly recommended to show you how you can send notification emails from Azure Data Factory using an Azure Logic app. Finally, our subscription name is the subscription you want these resources to be tracked under. Since you may have several subscriptions, you should specify which one you want to use for this lab. The PowerShell script makes use of an Azure resource management template to help us configure and deploy our resources. This approach is a recommended way to deploy a wide variety of Azure services as you can share parameters and variables between your resources rather than having to learn all the individual PowerShell commandlets, which could be the alternate way. Let's talk a bit about how we are using the variables feature of ARM templates. Looking at the list of variables, you can see, for instance, we are using the lab name prefix and building names for our services by appending into a string that represents that service. For instance, if our prefix was ADF Lab, our logic app name would be ADF Lab Logic App Email. Note that some resources, such as our Azure SQL Server and Azure Storage account, need to be unique across all of Azure, so we use a five character hash of the resource ID of your resource group. So after the services are deployed, it's highly recommended you log into the Azure portal and look at your Azure resource group and note down the names of those servers so you can use those when needed in future lab modules. Our ARM template file also makes use of the output section to pass runtime information back to the PowerShell script. In our case, we pass back the SQL Server name and storage name to our script so that we can use those targets to deploy files to the storage account and also restore databases to our Azure SQL database server. In this lab module, we will be connecting our Office 365 API connection to an Office 365 account that you configure in the PowerShell script. This will let our Azure Logic app send out email notifications, which we will configure in a future lab. And finally, this lab module will walk you through how to use the Azure portal to create and configure the Azure Data Factory so that we can be ready to jump in and start developing our data orchestration workflows. I hope this lab module shows you the power of Azure resource management templates and how, 
with a little bit of PowerShell scripting so they can make the task of deploying multiple Azure services repeatable and save you time.